What is up, Flutter devs? You know, we're starting to make some pretty interesting things possible with the Flutter processing package, and that means some of you might want to share what you're creating. Well, processing has a couple of APIs that are supposed to help with that. One is called save, which saves the current canvas to a file. And the other is save frame, which will save a series of images to a series of files or a series of canvases to a series of files. And then you could stitch that together into a GIF or a movie or something like that. Now I've created a kind of custom GIF generator using a, a GIF package. And I've been using that a little bit just for sharing some of my own creations as I put out these videos. By the way, follow me on Twitter if you aren't already at Super Declarative on Twitter. But given that processing has a couple APIs specifically designed to save the current canvas to a file, I figured why don't we go ahead and implement, implement those methods as well so that those of you out there who are creating interesting things, you can save at least a still image or a series of images based on what you're creating. So let's go look at what that API looks like. We're first gonna, today we're gonna handle the save method. In the next video, we'll handle the save frame method. The save method you can see here, you pass in a file name with an acceptable extension and then processing will capture the image, save it to a file with a type based on the extension you've provided in a standard processing directory with the given name. There are four image types supported by processing, TIFF, Targa, JPEG, and PNG. Uh, we will pretend that we support all four, but you'll see that one of the packages we're going to use for this only supports TIFF for reading purposes, not for writing. So we don't have a package. I, at least I haven't found a package yet that looks like it's good for writing TIFF files. For now, we're just going to throw an error or an exception if someone tries to save a TIFF. But we will support TGA, JPG, and PNG. But there is an aspect to this that is different for us as Flutter developers as opposed to the integrated product that is processing. You might run this on any platform, uh, and who, know, who knows whether you're running your processing sketch from this repository or if you've created a build, or if you're running it on the web. And what this means is, is that there isn't necessarily an obvious place to automatically save images. Instead, we're going to take the perspective that whatever developer is calling save knows where they want to save the file. And so they're not just going to provide a file name as a string. They're going to provide a file object that refers to an actual location on the file system. And then in theory, you could run this save function on any platform you want, and it would work because before calling save, you went through the process of obtaining an actual file location. So that's one of the differences that we're gonna go with. Also, rather than exclusively reading the extension, uh, we will allow you to specify an extension, but we will also let you override that with a file format. One such example of where this might be useful is there's TIF and there's TIFF, and both of those extensions should reasonably work as a TIFF file. The, I don't know if TGA is the same thing. With JPG, there's also JPEG rather than us figure out all the different combinations of these extensions, we will support these default string-based extensions. But if you want to use a different extension, or if for some reason you want to end an image with .png but actually make it a JPEG, we will allow you to specify what you want the format to be. That's a second difference between what we're going to create and what's defined here in the API docs. With that said, let's go look at some of the groundwork that we need to lay here. First, let's talk about packages. We are not going to implement writing data in different image formats. For that, we have the image package on PubDev. You'll see that it supports read-write for PNG, JPEG, Targa, all three of which we're using. But you will see that TIFF is supported for reading and not for writing. Therefore, we're just going to throw an unimplemented error 
or exception when anybody tries to use TIFF. This package, though, handles all of this encoding for us. We will also bring in the path package so that we can easily inspect the extension on files. And then, so both of those are going to be placed in the, the Flutter processing package, but then in our example app, we're also going to bring in file selector as a generic plugin and file selector Mac OS. This is what's going to allow us to select a particular place on my system to save a file. Those are the packages we're bringing in. I've already added them to the pub spec. Here's image and path added to the overall package. And here are the file selectors added to the example app. They've already been added. They've already been brought in. One other thing is entitlements. If you're going to run this app on Mac OS, inside, if we come up here to the Mac OS project, there's a runner directory. Inside the runner directory is this debug profile entitlements. First, if you want to provide access to a file that the user has explicitly chosen, you need this permission right here, com apple security files user selected read write. That will work for us for this one function. However, in the next video, when we work on save frame, we need to save a series of images, which means the user is not choosing a specific file. We are writing arbitrary files. There may be some weird combination of permissions that allow you to do that, or you might just have to write to the pictures directory. But I didn't want to do that here. I wanted to actually allow arbitrary access to the file system. And so I came up here and I turned the app sandbox from true to false. When the app is sandboxed, you only have access to kind of like white listed areas. It's inside of a sandbox. By making this false, those restrictions are gone. However, you can't upload an app to the app store with this permission set to false. In a release build for uh, general distribution, this has to be true. You have to make your app work within the sandbox. Okay, so both of those changes, turning this from true to false and then adding this permission are relevant for the work that we're doing. And once you make these changes and you just rebuild the app and relaunch it like right here, then you should be good to go. So we'll get rid of that, get rid of that. And this, this is kind of a, a hacking entry point that we used in previous videos. We were trying to get images working and we were making sure that we could sample colors at any pixel. I haven't touched it since then. We're going to use this to build out the ability to save an image. And by using this example, we are ensuring that we capture not just what's drawn in Canvas commands, but truly what is rasterized in pixels. Because again, here we are loading an image and then painting that image to the canvas. And I think, let's see here. So we're dealing with regions of an image and we are all the green pixels. We're literally painting them pixel by pixel. So we're by saving this image, we're making sure that really save will, will really capture whatever anybody tries to draw. That's the groundwork. Most of the groundwork. The next piece of groundwork is in this example, in this app, how do we actually trigger a save? How do we trigger the file selector? Let's go ahead and add that right now. We're going to come, so we have a scaffold right here, which means that we can add a floating action button. I'll come to the bottom here, say floating action button, floating action button. On pressed, we will call something called save image, which doesn't exist yet. The child will be an icon, icons.save. Okay. Then let's define save image. All right, let's save that. And now we have this floating action button that I can tap on doesn't do anything because we haven't implemented this method yet. What do we want the save image method to do? First, I want to introduce the concept 
of an image file format enumeration. Let's go into our core implementation here. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. This is, we're in the core of the package, and I'm going to add an enum, which is image file format. So these are essentially the formats supported by processing, and then we can reference this enum anywhere that we want. Uh, so we're going to support PNG, we're going to support JPEG, we're going to support TIFF, not really, but in theory, and we're going to support Targa. And the reason that I defined that is because here in this save image, to test it out with different file formats, the first thing we're going to hard code is the image format, we're going to say image file format.png. So we're going to get PNG working first, but then we can just come up here and switch this to the other formats and everything else should work as desired. If we're going to choose a, a file, we can pass a desired extension and MIME type along with it. So string extension, string MIME type. And here's where we're going to use that image format to begin with. We'll do a switch statement. Here are the possible cases. Extension for PNG is going to be PNG. And the MIME type is going to be image slash PNG. For JPEG, it's going to be JPG for the extension. And then the MIME type is going to be image slash JPEG spelled out. TIFF, the extension is going to be TIF, and the MIME type is going to be image slash TIFF spelled out. The extension uh, for Targa is TGA, and the MIME type is image slash Targa. Now, with the extension and the MIME type, we can ask for a file chooser. What we're going to get back is, I think, a file path. So file path equals await git save path. That's a, a top level method provided by the file chooser plugin. Accepted type groups. We're going to have one, which is x type group. Extensions. The only extension that we have. Mime types. The only mime type that we have. You know, in practice, I'm not even sure this makes a difference. It didn't seem to make a difference when I ran it before. You can still select any file, but it's probably good to be in the habit of limiting your file choosers based on what you actually want the user to choose. We call await here, which means this is going to launch the file chooser, and we're going to select a file, and we're going to get the path back. Now, it might be null. If the user cancels, it's going to be null. So we're going to say if file path is null, print user canceled the file selection return otherwise let's hold on to this to the selected file now one of the tricky things here is that <clears throat> we can't actually save the image from this method because the saving capability is a processing sketch capability whereas this method is running in response to a Flutter user interaction callback. These things happen at different times. We need to save a frame during the draw method of a sketch. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a file object, which is nullable, called file to save image. And then at the end here, we're going to say file to save image equals file instantiated with the given file path. Then down here in our draw method within our sketch, at the very end of all the painting that we're going to do, one thing we need to do is one more time we need to call s.loadpixels because we did a little bit of painting right here and there was no need to reload the pixels before, but now if we're going to save the image, we need to go ahead and load the pixels that we just painted to make sure we save them. But after this, we will say if file to save image is not equal to null, then save the image, 
and then null out that value so we don't try to save it again. Okay, so we tap the, the floating action button. It runs this method up here. Looks like file we need to import dart.io. We run save image. We figure out the extension, the MIME type. We ask the user to select a file. We save a reference to that file locally. On the next invocation of draw, we will paint the frame, and at the very bottom, we will save it to a file. So now let's give that a try and see what happens. It's not going to save it, but let's see if the file chooser works. Okay, we have this directory pulled up, so the file chooser comes up. We have this directory here. We can enter a file name. So we can say, you know, well, first let's see if the cancellation actually happens. Here's run. I already canceled once. I'll cancel again. Okay. So it recognizes we canceled it. That's good. Come back here and let's call this uh, PNG test. Save. It didn't say we canceled, so it's non-null. So everything from the selection should be okay. Uh, we just need to actually implement the ability to save the image. So let's go figure out how we're going to do that. First of all, what do we want to call from here? What should this say? We want to say s.save file will be file and then we could op the we could optionally provide an explicit file format, but in this case we know that our file has the extension that represents the format. So we will let it be implied. We just need to implement the ability to figure out what the extension means. The definition of this is what we're looking for, save. We want save, and want, we want it to take a file, and we want it to take an optional image file format. Let's come over to core. Let's see, where do we want to implement this? It's, it should go, based on the API listing, this should go below input keyboard. So here's start input keyboard. We're going to go beneath that. And we're going to create a section for output image. And then we're going to say save required file called file image file format is optional called format. And then we're going to say to do. We need to import dart IO. Okay. Now we need to fill this out. How are we going to save this thing? First, we need to figure out, we need to resolve the image format. For that, let's say, image file format image format. First, if, the, if we are provided with a format that's not null, we're going to use that. That's an override. So if you give us a format, we're using that no matter what. Else, infer the format and for the format. In this case, we need to look at the file path, the file name, grab the extension, and decide which, which um, file format to assign to it. And for that, we are going to define a method which will return an image file format, get image file format from file name. And what we want, we actually just, we'll just take in a file path. So it's probably not the perfect name. Let's say from file path. Now, how do we do that? How are we going to infer it? Now, this is the reason that I brought in the path uh, package. I don't want to actually parse this thing out and look for dots here and dots there. Instead, we're going to say file extension equals path dot I need to import that. So it's a top level method. So let me go up to the top of the file here. Say import package path as path. Organize the imports. Come back here, path, extension, pass in the file path. So that'll go figure out the extension for us. And then all we have to do is say switch file extension 
case.png return image file format.png case.jpg return image file format.jpg case tiff return image file format.tiff I know I said we're not supporting it we'll throw that exception a little bit later and finally uh, format targa and actually I'm, I'm going to make one adjustment here I'm going to add a default and we're going to return null now if it's null that's a problem but that's a problem to be dealt with higher up in the call stack there's our get image file format from file path which leads us back up to this to do and we will say here we have to create another intermediate value because the response might be null image format from file equals get image file format path file dot path then we're going to say if image format from file is null then we're going to throw an exception and we're going to say cannot save image to file with invalid extension and no explicit image type and we will show what path is causing that problem but assuming it's not null then the resolved format is whatever we got back from that method now we have the format what's next well how about we get the actual image data let's retrieve the pixel data for the current sketch painting which is going to look like raw image data equals pixels which is a local property buffer as uint8 list that gets us a list of bytes that represent the image data but now we need to convert the pixel data to the desired format what we're going to produce is a, a, actually a list of int. And we're going to call that formatted image data. And that's because, we, first of all, that's what the image package is going to give us. But also when we go to save the file, the file is not going to ask us for a uint8 list. It's going to ask us for a generic list of integers. So this covers both bases. Now we switch on the image format, which we figured out earlier. Each of these cases, we now need to format the pixels. Formatted image data equals, uh, let's see, image format. Um, hold on, we need the, we need to actually import the image package. So we're going to have a, another naming conflict here, I think. Let me come up here and let me say import package image image as image formats because we're specifically using it to format images in this case come all the way back down here image formats plural dot encode png the image that it wants this image is a different is a type of image that comes from the image package there are a number of different images floating around here. We have image widgets. We have the, I think the Dart UI version of image. And now we have the image package version of image, which is another reason uh, to namespace it like this, or the primary reason to namespace it. So we will instantiate this special kind of image from bytes. So the width is the width of the sketch. The height is the height of the sketch. And then we want the raw image data. And now we have correctly obtained PNG formatted pixels. Let's copy this and adjust it for JPEG. Okay, TIFF, now we're going to throw the exception. Un, or I guess it's actually an error, unimplemented error. TIFF images are not supported in save. Maybe one day. 
Finally, Targa. Encode TGA. By the end of this switch statement, I guess we can have a default here as well. So we throw exception. Actually, we don't need that. We have we have already definitively resolved the enumeration. So it is it, we will hit one of these four paths. Therefore, by the time we get down here, formatted image data is definitely not null. And now we can finally get to the good part, which is write the formatted pixels to the given file. Await file write as bytes formatted image data. Okay. Save that. And now we should be able to save. Oh, something's still going wrong here. Let's see. Did I not make that a named parameter? Save file. Ah. Uh, this is file to save image. And we know that it's not null. Save. Okay, I think we're good. So now we should be able to save a PNG to the file system. And it should look like this with the all the set pixels and the composited images. Save, PNG test, save. And I'm gonna keep my file system off screen, but if I, I, I can find that file, and here it is. You see PNG-test, PNG. We correctly took those pixels, formatted them as a PNG, saved it to a file. Now let's test the two other file formats. And I mentioned that uh, we can just switch this enumeration right here. So let's try JPEG. Save that. Click this. Test JPEG. I guess I just inverted the name from the previous one, but whatever, that's fine. Okay, and here's the JPEG. Looks pretty indistinguishable to me, but it is a JPEG, and it's saved at the desired location. Let's try Targa. Save. Okay. Targa test. Here you go, targa-test.tga. And according to the file system, this is a TGA image. So that image package has successfully encoded all three of these different formats. If someone can find a, a dependable TIFF encoding package, I'll consider bringing that in as well. But we now have the ability to at least save any still frame you want. As long as you can connect some kind of button here, and as long as you can halt your sketch for a frame to paint it. I mean, you can paint it while it's animating. You just won't know which frame you're going to get. But if you have a still frame and you can stick a button on here, then you can hook up the same thing that we did here. You can save in any of those three of those four formats. You can bring up the file chooser. And eventually, as we expand this to web and other environments, we can see if the file chooser works equally well for those. For now, I'm just worried about Mac. That is the save method implemented. In the next video, we're going to build on top of this work to create the save frame method, which allows you to, for example, save frame after frame after frame after frame, a sequence of frames that you can then, in your own way, stitch together. So uh, I hope you learned something here. hope you enjoyed it. hope to see you in the next video. And we're, we're getting closer to finishing this thing. All right. See you later.